Reggie, why do you think that, you know, obviously you're, you're analyzing these things and you're coming to these conclusions, and like you say, 2 plus 2 equals 4. How is it that this isn't more prevalent? Or maybe it is, and I'm not in the industry enough to know. But is it that those institutions are too embedded in that system that they don't want to admit, and that's why it doesn't get reported enough? Or is it, Well, which institutions? I'm saying media like... Media or investment? I guess investment. In media, I sort of already know the answer. Well, you have to understand, investment houses that you normally get research from, you know, you don't pay for the research. They're giving it to you, and you get what you pay for. Okay, so if research for investment houses are simply marketing. You know, they give you research. Hopefully, if you follow the research, you do what they want you to do. And what they want you to do is create an action that either generates commissions, spreads, or fees. Or somebody to sell in, you know, an outsized, you know, doo position to it, basically. So it comes down to a forced growth. They have to show growth, whether it's the truth or not. They'll lie if it doesn't take place, and they're just pushing it off to another day. To well, day it's, more, it's simpler than that. I have, uh, for instance, I, I think that Apple is, uh, you know, their growth rate is going to drop significantly soon. I have a bunch of Apple stock. I need to get rid of it. I issue a blaring report. Apple's going up to six hundred and fifty dollars a share. The best thing since sliced bread. The iPhone four, or five, six. <laughs> you know, far as pixie dust, etc. Right? I give it to you. Hey, I buy a bunch of Apple stock. You go buy Apple stock. I just so happen to say, hey, you know, I Procus has some Apple stock. Buy this. I eliminate my Apple position. And then once my Apple position is eliminated, Apple stock drops. You know, and I'm going after you buy it back cheaper possibly from the same person I sold it to. All based upon the research report. How much did you pay for a research report from Apple? When you, does anybody have a brokerage account with a big five, four, three? They're dropping now. You have one? Yeah. Do you get research? Uh, yeah, sometimes. Yeah, how much you pay for it? Nothing. How much is it worth? Well, that, yeah, that's actually my question. Do, <laughs> do these bank analysts have any incentive to, like when they say when they go on television, or make an interview with a newspaper or something. Do they actually have any incentive to give the right answer? No. Well, it depends. I mean, you know, you right know if you never get hungry and don't need to eat, you don't have kids. And, right. You know, independently wealthy. wealthy. Well, well, like never want to work in a business again. You know, from from the point of view, from the point of view of a bank who hires an analyst, mm -hmm. what what does the bank expect to get out of the analyst? The bank expects the analyst to support the trading and investment banking operations. So, so really, the only job that the analyst has to do is issue, issue some kind of statements to the public that encourages them to trade with that bank, perhaps, and generate some commissions for them. But it doesn't really matter whether that advice is going in the right direction or not, as long as it like continually convinces people to keep on trading. The right direction is a direction that generates commissions, fees, manages inventory, or creates investment back into business. Right, so whether you know, or not for, for instance, actually you can have a negative 40% return for the client, but if you were able to do three underwritings, you got rid of a large position that was illiquid in the bank, and you generated you know, $350 million commissions for the broken force, you get promoted 15 times. That's, but that's not conspiracy theory, too? Like it's not conspiracy theory. <laughs> <They're not that. laughs> you know, it sounds like it should be you, you could go to my <laughs> site, um, pull up a uh, Reggie Milton versus Wall Street, I've run circles around all the Wall Street banks, all of them, four or five years running. I'm talking twice the return. You know, I run between one and, four, one and four analysts, max, and me. You know, a bachelor's degree from Howard University. All the banks, all the bank analysts. And when you work That's an awful hell of a coincidence, isn't it, right? I'm, I'm a bright guy, don't get me wrong. I also think I'm handsome, too, in the world's best level. But, you know, <laughs> in reality, if you step back, it's a good chance that instead of being that good, the bank's goal is not necessarily to get the best return for the client, but to manage their business. This can be told because when was the last time you consistently got something of value for free without paying for it? Tell me, outside of your research, can anybody think of uh, another incident? Usually you get something of value, somebody wants you to pay for it because it takes money to generate it. Then there's a profit margin issue. So no, you keep getting something for free. Price. Yeah. Um, I did a show for VPRO, which is uh, Technic, which is like the BBC or the PBS for um, Holland, uh, the Netherlands. And uh, at the end of it, I told her, explained to everybody that um, I have children. I tell my children that um, you know nothing is truly free. And usually, things that are given to you for free are the most expensive things that you'll get. It's just that you're not aware of how much it costs. By the time you finish paying for it, you realize exactly how expensive that free 
I don't like it very clearly. And that's generally the way. Um, never follow anybody blindly. Always do your own research. It's just not smart. It's not a good idea. Um, particularly if you get something for free. Nobody can afford to get a, to give out anything of value for free for any particular amount of time, unless it's not free. They're compensated somehow. Usually, I tell my children, um, the free things are the most expensive things in the world. <laughs> and after you finish paying for it, you then find out exactly how expensive it was and how it wasn't free. So let's say a bank hires an analyst, tells the analyst to go to Bloomberg, do a TV interview, and this analyst says, you know, like, gold is going to go to $4,000 an ounce. Now, I'm wondering why is the bank paying somebody to do that when the only real connection that the public is going to see is they're going to mention the, the bank's name once. But that's not enough for anybody to like switch their brokerage account and like say, I'm going to trade with you know, Goldman Sachs because it's their analyst that I heard this information from. They, they don't care whose brokerage they use, right? They're just going to use the brokerage they already have established. Did you so, buy gold? Well, maybe, but maybe is that going to affect Goldman Sachs it, has several gold funds? But is that going to affect like the probability that any individual trader would use the Goldman Sachs fund as opposed to like any other uh, any other gold fund? It may. I mean, Goldman Sachs makes a lot of money. Where do you think the money comes from? Doesn't have to as long as they create a general. Yeah, they're getting demand, demand in the market. Prices. You're increasing yeah, prices. You have a position in gold Goldman Sachs makes a lot of money. And they cannot necessarily trade any better than anybody else. If you look at many things on my site, I'm putting up an article tomorrow, as a matter of fact, that shows that Goldman Sachs is a horrible trader. As a matter of fact, every time volatility spikes, they take losses in their trading operations. Every single time. So if they cannot trade through chopping volatile markets... More so than others. Yeah, more so, actually worse than others. Um, why, how is it that they uh, make money? They make money by taking advantage of you know, their clients and customers. Now, I'm not going to pick on Goldman Sachs. That's the investment banking model, you know, and that's the, bro the model uh, for salespersons with uh, analytical, sell side analytical divisions, and it's a model for proprietary trading. Correct. Now, yeah. Yeah, now you can see why our banks don't love me. <laughs> Reggie. But, you know, that's how I see it. You know, you're, I agree with what you're saying. Um, because they're doing this, obviously this is not... To me, it's not a long, unless you can continue to get bailed out by governments, this is not a long-term profitable way of doing business, right? So, uh, and I'm just trying to get, because, you know, we're talking sort of like what the bad things are, but there is a positive side that people who do business, honestly, like yourself, get more business, right? When these people who are doing things for, you know, whatever reason, they're not, they're not actually serving their, their customers. There's somebody out there like you giving decent advice. There's an opportunity there. From that analytical perspective, it's difficult. Most of my money has always came from investments. Um, I charge for the analysis because it helps defer the cost of generating analysis. Um, there are some times, usually when markets blow up, and everybody says, oh, Reggie had a point where the website revenue was spiked temporarily. But in general, people want to be taken advantage of. P.T. Barnum has it right. You know? <laughs> they want to be taken. They hear Goldman Sachs, or they walk on water, they're special, they're cute. World's best lover, and, you know they take the title from me every now and then. But honestly, they want to be taken advantage of, and until that mindset has changed, people will continue to get free advice from someone who benefits from giving out advice that should be paid for, but is not. And um, you need a general change in mindset. So you need a bad burn. Uh, yeah, you need to get burned. You need to be scorched yeah. with you know several degrees. 